Hey guys, Ron here. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today I'm showing you the house behind me. I'm going to show you more in a couple minutes. This is the home where Lana Turner lived and where Johnny Stompanano, her gangster boyfriend, was killed supposedly by her daughter, the daughter from her second marriage, uh, Cheryl Crane. So first let's take, it to house, take a look for the house for a moment. This is here in Beverly Hills. Now, very interesting about this case is that... Well, let's look at the house for a moment. House, house, house. <laughs> and then we'll talk about it. I think the conversation is going to be a little bit more interesting than the house. So, Cheryl Crane lived with her mother. Lana Turner, as we all know... It's the house again behind me. Lana Turner, as we all know star for decades pretty much from the 40s until uh well the 70s pretty much she had a little resurgence in the 80s but pretty much from the 40s to the 70s lana turner was a pretty big star uh and she did many films and you know it was the era of the beautiful starlet and the casting couch and some of the ladies would be lucky enough and through their talent and through their connections to make it as a big star, and she eventually did. Her personal life, on the other hand, she was married seven times, numerous affairs, and one of the affairs, or one of the, her love interests finally got her in some, some serious trouble, or could have gotten her in some serious trouble, I should say. Um, let's look at the house again behind me, and I'm, of course, going to come back to it again. So, by the late 50s, Lana Turner was involved with Johnny Stompanano. Now, Johnny Stompanano was an associate, a bodyguard, uh, God knows what else, of Mickey Cohn, gangster, and the mob boss of Los Angeles. Now, Johnny Stompanano, besides being a bad boy, was a tall, very handsome guy, athletic, so he was used to having his way with women, let's say, quite understandably. He had everything going for him, uh, except that he was a dangerous mobster. So he got involved with Lana Turner, and Lana's Turner, Lana Turner was with her, I'll keep showing you out of the house here, huh? Lana Turner, uh, by that time, like I say, it was 1958, so her career was sort of low ebbing. It wasn't nearly over. In fact, she had just uh, had some great success just a few years earlier. Um, but she was getting a little bit older. She wasn't quite the pinup girl star she had been in the 40s. Um, so she was involved with Stompanano, and Stompanano was, you know, a bad guy and an abusive guy and a thug and a gangster, a literal not people who pretend they are gangsters now, but a literal gangster, mob gangster. So, one night, uh, Lana Turner was there with Stompanano, and as the story goes, he was being, he, Stompanano, oh, I'll be back to you in a second, folks. Oh, oh hold on. I'm uh, sorry about that. Anyway, he, Stompanano, was supposedly fighting again in this house with Lana Turner, abusing her, possibly hitting her. And Cheryl, her 14-year-old daughter, came in, witnessed it, and stabbed Stompanano to death. Now, this is the widely accepted version, and I, as far as I know, Cheryl, Cl Cheryl Crane has never said anything other than that. However, there were rumors all along that the Hollywood press, not the press, that the Hollywood machine, as they did, often did, went into cover-up mode, and that it was actually Lana Turner that, <laughs> security guard just waved at me, sees me filming the house, maybe he'll come back and tell me not to, well, at least he was, at least he waved, uh, that Lana, but I was just saying that the, the theory that the Hollywood machine came into play, and to protect Lana Turner, that Lana herself actually stabbed Stompanano, and that, you know, besides being dangerous for her, that 
it would be a great scandal for her career and possibly dangerous for her life. And that, uh, you know, her daughter took the fall. I, I don't know if I believe that, but you never know with the Hollywood machine. So all we can say for certain is that um, Cheryl went to court, testified. Alana went to court, testified. It was accepted that she, that Stampinano was killed in self-defense. And like I say, Lana was a pretty big star and Cheryl was just a 14 year old girl. And that was pretty much the end of the story as far as I know. If you guys know any differently, let me know. Now, also, it didn't sell well. I mean, Cheryl was admittedly, oh, look at this beautiful home here. Cheryl was admittedly traumatized by this event. And she went afterwards to like boarding schools, girls schools, and subsequently escaped a couple times and finally got her life together and became a model, became a real estate broker, lived in Hawaii, lived in Palm Springs where I grew up. And actually she might still be in Palm Springs. And she finally found personal happiness. She married her long term, her long time girlfriend. And I believe she and her wife are and I'm saying, did I say Cheryl? Did I say Lana? I mean Cheryl. This whole time, I mean, obviously, Lana Turner is dead. But Cheryl Crane eventually married her long-term girlfriend. And I believe that she and her wife are still married to this day. I don't know if they're in the, still in Palm Springs or not. But anyway, uh, somebody's having a pool party here. Somebody here in this giant Beverly Hills mega mansion. You can hear them out there. But anyway, uh, and that's what the story is to this day. So we don't know. Uh, can we still catch the house from the corner? You know, we'll never know exactly what happened or maybe we do know exactly what happened. It's just, and you know, happened in 1958. Nobody's gonna investigate it anymore. So it is what it is. And I just find it a very interesting case. And like I said, there was an infest location. I, I, I realize, I, I see also that I'll show you some of these houses here on Bedford. It's the house back there on the corner. I see that the home has bars on the window. So even though it's in this very exclusive neighborhood, and as we saw in the middle of the day, the security guard just passed by, either people have tried to break in, in this beauty, uh, because of its infamy, or uh, I don't know. It's the only house I can see here that has bars on the window, though. All right, folks, I'm going to call it there. Thank you very much for watching and listening. My name is Ron, and if you like the channel, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. If you do, please leave uh, or give the channel likes. Comment in the comment section if you see fit. And if you do subscribe, what I was going to say was hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button, and then you'll get notifications as to when I post. Okay, folks, he and I are going to bid you a farewell. Thanks very much, and we'll see you at the next location. Bye-bye.